Hey guys, this is the unfairly criticized Hector you might know from titles such as the 5 second rule and stop complaining and start caring. As a heads up, this is a guide I made for our website from a couple of months ago before the season 10 changes were added, but we wanted to release this here because it's such an important concept to learn for support players to stop trolling their games and actually start caring. So, I tend to both smurf and look at low yellow replays quite often to see what players struggle with. There's just one consistent thing that every range support does, or rather doesn't do, which loses them so many lanes. Let's get right into it. You're going to have one mission, just one. Hit the minion wave. That's it, congratulations. You're now better than 99% of low elo supports. Let's get into the smurf game to see what I mean. I was AFK at the start of the game, my team invades without me, I go to help, and because my positioning was bad, I also lose my flash and Ash dies. Not only that, but then I get to the lane and try to start mission one, but I get cheesed. It's been a while since I've been cheesed this way, but hey, well done. I'm now really far behind. As I walk back to the lane, let's set up a little game. Try to count how many times Janna auto attacks the minion wave until the laning phase ends. If that sounds tedious, don't worry, I will definitely tell you at the end of the video. When I get back to lane, Ash has been poked quite a bit and the wave is crashing. I'm gonna help her get most of these CS. Knowing how to CS as a support indirectly helps your AD carry farm, so do try and get better at that. And awesome, we just won the lane. Let's talk about why. Look at the minion waves. Ours is grouped together, not in a line like theirs, and it's closer to our side. So when the waves end up crashing, our wave will focus fire one melee creep, whereas the enemy wave will be less coordinated. This will naturally give us minion advantage. Also, since the wave is closer to our side, our wave in the base should get here first, which should reinforce our wave faster, giving us minion advantage as well. So how does the enemy bot lane avoid this potentially game losing play? Well, all they have to do is pressure us while we're lasting under tower and begin hitting the next wave. This would allow them to retain wave control. A concern that may arise here is that both Ash and I don't have flash. Wouldn't we just get ganked while we push this aggressively? Not to worry, we'll address this once we actually get ganked. Jana looks at the situation and decides to go for the most random trade of her life into our minion wave. Kaisa then tries to fight back for wave control so I'm going to respond by auto-attacking as well. If it's me and Ash against only her, we're definitely going to come out on top. But when it's clear that she can't contest the wave, I stop auto-attacking. Your goal is to have a slow push so that you can deny them as much gold and experience as possible. I then go place a pretty random ward. Uh, there isn't much thought behind this. It's probably just me auto-piloting. Don't pay too much attention to this. As we've discussed in previous videos, your major trading pattern should be to use one spell to proc Airy, Scorch, and Spell Thief's Edge. Janna then outplays me and dodges my Q with Faker level movement. I don't think anyone in the world could have seen this coming. Well played. So, we saw Zac gank top lane early into the game. This prompted Lee Sin to go counter jungle his blue side. This is pretty good because it allows us to play very aggressively at the moment since we should know where Zack is. We keep spotting Zack on the map as we continue to play aggressively. There really shouldn't be any way we die here. That is until my Ash decides to stand next to the only wall that Zack could come from. Awesome! To try to make up for this, I go for a sneaky cheese play here. If I hadn't stuttered my auto for 10 years and landed my Q on Kai'Sa, this could have potentially been an easy double kill. But I suck, what are you gonna do? Oh darn, their Kai'Sa is now 3-0 to R0 to Ash. I guess we're gonna have to play safe and hope that our team carries. Oh wait, that's right, by having a bigger minion wave, the enemy can never trade with us, which means we can continue to win despite being so far behind. When you have wave control, you can easily leave lane to go get vision so you can continue to play aggressively. In high elo, this may be a throw. Kai'Sa and Janna could use their item advantage to thin the wave and get control back. But I wasn't worried about this because no one in low elo ever thinks about this whatsoever. Janna then decides it's the perfect time to trade and walks into our entire minion wave. 
I walked a bit too far back here trying to bait this, which is definitely a mistake by me since we could have punished her much harder had I been in range to cue her. But alas, we continue our pressure by collapsing this huge wave into their tower. The difference between us and them is that we're pressuring the next wave as it comes in, whereas they completely allowed us to get the bounce back and get wave control. This way, Kaisa can never really play the game. We then have a pretty good hunch that Zack is trying to gank us, so I'm going to look for a bait. This is very Zack specific, but it's pretty useful to know as a bot laner. At level 5, with 3 points in his E, this is as far as Zack can go from this wall. That's why I specifically stand here, wanting him to go in. I knew I wouldn't get hit by the knockup, and then we can kite into our wave. This is why ganks are really easy to avoid when you're pushing. You have the vision to see ganks coming, and if you kite into your own wave, the enemy takes a ton of damage from creeps trying to get to you, and the gank becomes very sloppy, and you can even easily turn around 2v3 scenarios. This may feel like incredibly specific information. What if they had a Fed Jin Zhao jungle and a Leona support? As with any concept we teach, you need to learn to apply it to your specific circumstances in your game. In that scenario, use the priority you get from pushing to get wards that are specifically good versus Jin Zhao. After we kill Kaisa, we do this. I don't really want to analyze whatever this is. Next time we meet in the lane, we naturally had wave control due to a bounce back we got because they crashed the wave into our tower. Because of this, Kaisa is still unable to play the game whatsoever. And because we've retained wave control, I'm able to continuously find poke, especially onto the Janna. This is important because Lee Sin is bot lane at the moment, and setting up a dive with Ash Arrow is quite likely. Then we see that Zack is actually in top lane. Now we should 100% dive because there's absolutely nothing that could go wrong. I ping to go in, Ash arrows, and what do you know, the kill is really easy. Because I have flash and ultimate still up, I look to bait the enemy at blue buff. I know that if they go in, my teammates can just back me up and it's an easy kill. And low elo players always take every single bait. Off of this kill, we get ocean dragon, and then we can go finish off the bot lane tower, which is so low since we've been at it the entire game. Do you remember that game we were playing about counting Janna's auto attacks? Now that the laning phase is over, here's the answer for the three of you who actually counted. Four. Here's two when Ash died early game and they had to reset the wave. It would have been really troll if she wasn't auto attacking here. Here's another which I'm very suspicious was a misclick as she was trying to trade at the moment. And the fourth is when her Kaisa was dead and she tried to last hit a single minion. Not a single one of her auto attacks was meant for wave control. Not a single one. Now you may be wondering, well, what elo is this? This is Platinum 4. I'm not trying to bash this specific player. I'm bashing every support in this elo range and lower because 99% of them refuse to have any influence on the minion wave. They just sit there hoping their AD carry 1v2s the lane. I'm sure the reason is different for all support players but everyone seems to be afraid of touching the minion wave, for whatever reason. Yeah, you're gonna screw up some CS. Yes, you will mismanage the wave and get ganked. But it's better to be proactive and learn from your mistakes than sitting there and hoping that the coin flip goes in your favor. And why winning lane is so important is because you can just do this. We group and we take two inhibitors at 18 minutes and the game at 20 minutes. It turns out if you stomp your lane, you can easily win the game. I really can't stress how important it is for you to do this. Doing so will differentiate you from every other support in low elo since almost none of them do it. And we're well aware of what some of you may be thinking. Autoing minions isn't what gave you priority, it was the matchup. Your range advantage auto wins the lane. While that is true, considering I trolled at level 1, then Ash and I both screwed up to give Kaisa a huge lead, that definitely invalidates the matchup advantage. And regardless, I would have done the exact same thing even if we had the opposite matchups. I would just prioritize Otto and Janna queuing the wave while he'd probably sit there going for a random cues on me. 
And that's going to be it for this guide. Thank you for watching and be sure to check us out at Skillcapped if you want to see more guides on climbing out of your elo.